that uh, a lot of the work that uh, CDOs are doing are, um, are part and parcel of a demand-driven process. There was somebody who said that, you know, one of the ways of, of succeeding in some of this is to create um, FOMO, the fear of missing out by really doing something so well that other people want to join you in this process. Uh, we also heard about um, the importance of being aware of the political economy of the communities and the spaces in which we're working, um, creating and, 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 and pushing for an enabling environment. And where those laws don't exist, working with partners to make sure that they do, that these things can be done and they're able to be pushed forward. Uh, but as also one participant said, collaboration can sometimes be so hard, but it is part and parcel of the of the values in which we live, and uh, and and are are re it really is part and parcel of of the fuel behind what um, uh, the CDOs are are doing in the different countries in which they work. But it's also around knowing when to walk away, when to choose the right partner, when to understand that this partnership isn't working. And when to to um, to uh, realize that uh, perhaps you need to reconfigure, we need to remain agile. And if nothing else, we've learned from COVID nineteen is the importance of doing that when it comes to sustainability and when it comes to creating lasting change. But I'm not going to go on much longer with that. I'm going to uh, turn it over to our uh, our host, OCDC, and I'm going to invite uh, Paul Hazen to please come and uh, and 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 talk to us uh, this morning. Over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, and greetings to everyone. We're so glad that you're here for this uh, virtual learning event. Uh, learning is a very important part of the cooperative development process. And we are very fortunate to have the cooperative development program that encourages collaboration and learning. So I hopefully you will continue to see OCDC as the go-to place for information and learning about cooperative development so that we can improve the programs that we operate in, in order to benefit the many people around the world that uh, enjoy uh, their membership in, in cooperatives. So, I just want to give a warm welcome to uh, everyone uh, for your participation in, in this event and uh, look forward to uh, learning along with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And then uh, we're going to ask um, uh, Bailey, who is uh, Bailey Morton, who is here with us today from uh, USAID, who was also kind enough to join us uh, for the in-person event. And you actually stuck it through, Bailey, thank you. Um, and uh, if you could just give us a couple of remarks this morning, um, and if you would like to share a little bit about um, the event last week, that would also be helpful, just in terms of bridging what we're, um, what, with what we're doing today. So over to you, Bailey. Thank you. <clears throat> so hello, everyone. My name is Bailey Morton. I am with uh, USAID. And uh, I'm new to the CDP program. And one thing that I've, I've noticed already is that CDP is really unique among uh, USAID initiatives in that um, there is a group of implementing partners who are, are kind of while working on their, their own projects are also coming together regularly to share what they're learning, to share insights with one another. And I think that really helps all of us in this group um, produce better work. And I think is also um, makes, makes CDP really well situated to help promote thought leadership within the wider USAID community on how, um, how cooperatives can be a way of promoting uh, inclusive and sustainable economic growth um, and, and locally led development. And so uh, I was really inspired by uh, the ways in which uh, this community uh, met last week and, and helped make each other stronger. And I look forward to the continuation of that this um, today as we, we meet once again to, to share insights with one another. So thank you. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you for that. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Judith to frame um, today's session. 
and um, and I'm not going to say any more. So over to you, Judith, please. Thank you so much, Rangeshi and um, Paul and Bailey also for your words. Just to add a few and to set up our expectations for today, um, really add my own words of welcome to everybody for joining us today. Uh, some of you have gotten up early, some of you are working maybe a little later than you might want to, but it's really important that you're with us. And we held this um, session today virtually for the purpose of inclusion, another value I think of that we all share within the cooperative development community. We wanted to have as many of you uh, participate in, in our thinking and uh, contributing to our knowledge through this virtual event. And we would have loved to have had you all in person. And we understand not everybody could be there. So we wanted to have this additional session where we could learn from you and you could contribute uh, your thoughts and thinking to um, to the way that, that we work together, how we collaborate. And I always emphasize this, the collaboration that is a nice thing and good thing in itself. But as Bailey said, it makes us stronger and deepens impact. Going back to the mentee, uh, it was great to see how many of us want to learn something new. And I'm sure we will. I think every time you get into a conversation with a colleague, particularly a like-minded colleague doing something that is akin to what you're doing and what you're aiming for, you do learn something. You go away uh, enriched by that knowledge. But I would also say that it's important to think about yourselves as helping to create that knowledge to you're creating to the uh, you're creating something new as you even get as we get together. So as we look forward into the into the cooperative development program, we very much hope that we can articulate some themes. And if you have a chance to read the summary of the in-person event, there's some things that are starting to emerge and we have to acknowledge that we want to, we're at the very high level, cooperative development, I think we're pretty much united around the cooperative values and the goals of the cooperative development program. But also within that, each of our organizations has a unique perspective and set of experiences to share, and we value those as well. Also, to understand collaboration and partnership, not just at sort of the global handshake level, if you will, but at the implementation level in different ways. And there are different forms of collaboration that can take place and different tools that we can use to support that collaboration or create to support it going forward. So we want all of those ideas and those thoughts sort of up and down the spectrum of, um, of, of collaboration and partnership in order to uh, enhance the, the impact of what we're doing as well as to extend its reach. And I'll, I'll just conclude by saying, it always helps me to remember that cooperatives and cooperative development are a really critically important tool. And we at the research group have evidence that supports that to advance an agenda of broad-based development, greater equity, and to level the playing field for people who uh, want to advance and have their own, own ideas and initiative to advance within, within their lives and create a better, better opportunities for themselves and their families. So to me, that's what it's all about. And even when we're talking on these nitty gritty things about, well, how do you choose your best partner and so forth? It, we only want to know that and, and understand that because we're serving this larger goal through cooperative development. So again, warm welcome today. And I'm very excited to, uh, to learn from you and to uh, be here as we together share what we have done during this session. We will go into some small groups as Wangeshi has said. So um, thank you again for coming. Thank you. Thank you for that, Judith. I especially like what you said about the fact that we will be looking at the spectrum of collaboration and partnership and, and that we are going to get into the, the nitty gritty of implementation um, when we start to talk about um, when we start to talk about the how um, so that it isn't something that is uh, is is about um, just organizations coming together, but really it's about the, the teams that are, are doing the work and, and what those partnerships also need to look like in order for this to work.
Um, those of you who uh, uh, know me um, know that I'm a very big fan of Eliot Kipchoge, although I cannot run. Don't tell all the other Kenyans, they might revoke my <laughs> Kenyan card. <laughs> but one of my favorite quotes about um, Eliot Kipchoge, for those who may not know, who is the greatest marathoner of all time, who holds the world record on the marathon. He's ran the marathon under two hours. We could go on and on about Eliud Kipchoge. But um, the marathon is often seen as something that is a, a, a solitary or an individual sort of goal and an, an individual um, win. But he always emphasizes the idea of teamwork. And he always says that 100% of me is nothing compared to 1% of the whole team. And that's really how uh, we're approaching this, which is, I guess, I'm preaching to the choir a little bit. You guys are all in cooperative development, so you do understand the importance of that. The fact that, um, as, as the Igbos tell us, if you want to go um, fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, you must go together. And that's really the essence of uh, today's session. So, Selandi, if you could just uh, show us the uh, agenda so we could just quickly go back to that um, uh, so that you know what we're doing next. Um, thank you. Um, we're going to be uh, hearing a little bit from those who were uh, in the uh, physical session or rather the in-person session. Um, we're going to then look at opportunities for joint action. And really the second bit is building on what we talked about because um, remember that question we asked, are you here because you have an opportunity to give your input? We were asking that sincerely and we do hope that you will give your input. Um, and, uh, and here's the opportunity to do that. Um, and so we're, uh, we're going to go through a, a little bit of that. And I know that uh, Judith has outlined um, some, of the, some of the highlights that emerged from what the, um, the different CDOs shared. And I know Equal Exchange and uh, Frontier were not able to join us for the in-person session, but they will be sharing. Um, we had asked everybody to prepare one or two, two or three slides about some of the, the challenges, but also some of the things that have gone really well. Um, and so once you share that, we will compile all of that and, uh, and, and send it out to you so that we can hear from, from each other because that is part and parcel of the, of the reflection and also part and parcel of the collaboration. Um, as I said, I see here, we do have people who are here for the um, in-person session. And if it's not um, making it a little, a little awkward, it would be good to hear from some of you. Um, I had asked Selandi to kick us off on that. So Selandi, if you could, that would be great. And um, and then uh, those of you who would like to share, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then after that, we will walk through um, those opportunities for uh, for collaboration, where we'll we'll look at the different tools. But Selandi, please have your say. Sure. Thank you so much, Wangeshi. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Selandi Brown, uh, OCDC ICRG's. Uh, communications manager. Um, I recently joined uh, the research group in early September, and so this was my first annual learning event uh, that I had the honor of participating in, and it was it was truly an incredible event. One to just learn so much about the, uh, the CDP and I mean this incredible program, but to also uh, be able to network and meet with so many members um, of our CDO community and really learning about their experiences, you know, what are some of the strategies and techniques that they employed in their programs that worked really well, ways that they could improve. Um, and so it was it was a really, really incredible um, a, a day and a half or so and, and learning more about the essence of, of partnerships and collaboration and how that is central and, and critical to the success of our programs was something um, that I, I loved 
hearing, um, but also I loved hearing it uh, re-emphasized throughout the course of the program as well. And so I'm excited about this opportunity that we have here today to be able to enhance that learning um, and knowledge that we learned there and to really build upon um, all of those different aspects that we talked about. And so I think that with the group that's here today, we'll be able to even go further um, in what we want to accomplish in terms of partnerships in the um, upcoming months and years. And so thank you and get you for the opportunity to speak and uh, looking forward to all that's to come today. Thank you. Thank you, Celandi. Um, I will ask um... I'm going to out. Barbara, can I put you on the spot? I'm going to I'm going to put Barbara on the spot just because she's next to me. We're in we're in uh, we're in this conference room together. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Barbara. It's so great to see everyone. Uh, the impressions or the reflections about the the two days that we've spent together, I think um, the for me, the the really great stuff was hearing from the different perspectives um, of both field and HQ colleagues, because sometimes, um, you know, we look just from the perspective of our program where we sit, whereas here we had several colleagues who joined us from field, and it was great that they were able to join. And uh, they always bring a slightly different perspective. So the colleagues from uh, from Kenya, we had two colleagues uh, who were working with WOKU, and they uh, were able to share greatly about the financial inclusion aspect and technology related to um, the the um, financial uh, programs that they work on, that that was great. We had Willie from um, Venture Thirty Seven team, um, and uh, Willie, uh, based in Rwanda, also provided great uh, insights from the point of view of how um, local. Uh, partnerships develop uh, from the local point of view, local perspective of what they bring and and how how to um, basically find a balance between the insights and the interests of local organizations and those that are represented by the CDP program at large. So um, that was great. And we also had Pamela uh, from Kenya from the Global Communities team, who also provided great examples uh, on a variety of uh, levels, um, examples that really spoke to the daily um, not only daily uh, problems and daily challenges, but also uh, the solutions that come from working closely with your local partners. So I think that was great. And I'm really looking forward to further um, comments here of colleagues uh, from Tanzania, from Mexico, from Peru. Uh, welcome and uh, please, uh, share as openly and as freely as you can. And uh, we all are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Um, and one of the things that we did do, uh, of course, as as uh, as you know, because I believe everybody had received the agenda, we had this for about one and a half days. And um, the, uh, the second day we were, uh, we had these breakout sessions where we uh, we did a sort of like speed dating style where you just had like a very short amount of time to look at um, to look at research, to look at tools, to look at um, at, uh, at at learning. Um, but that's what we're going to do a little bit of today. However, we're not going to compress it as much. We're not that we're rather we're going to uh, respond 
to some of what we got from the feedback, which is don't try and pack it all in because there's not going to be enough time to pack it all in and do a good job. So we're hoping that we've done it a little bit more justice this time around. Um, and what we'll do is just go through uh, some of what we extracted from uh, that in-person session. But most importantly, give everybody who is on um, on this session an opportunity to give their input to give their perspective on um, on these three pillars. So, um, Selandi, if we could go into some of the feedback that we had. So, we had um, we had these three um, these three areas that we were um, brainstorming on because, really, to be honest, it was you know, like I said, it was very staccato. Um, but it was fun because it was what was coming uh, towards the end of uh, of the sessions. Um, and we looked at the what. And then after that, we looked at the how. But what we're going to do today is focus on the how. I think we managed to spend quite a bit of time on the on on the what, as you'll see when we go through these slides. We're going to put you into groups. And in these groups, we're going to have somebody from uh, who was there for the in-person session. Um, and then now the rest of us uh, walking through that process where we will brainstorm on, uh, on the what. But back to what uh, sort of came out of this and um, you know, all uh, props to Camila from uh, NCB Eclusa who had proposed this session. And, and I think that we all really uh, got quite a bit out of it. And, and the thinking really was stemming from the fact that next year is a new APS coming out. Nobody knows when that's going to be, but um, really looking at what the trends have been for USAID, the fact that you know we, there is gonna be work on, in, on inclusivity, there's going to be hopefully work around um, climate change um, and, uh, and, and of course, sustainability. So on research, what are what's the what that can be done on research? And this is what the teams came up with: value chain and market linkages, looking at the legal and regulatory challenges, climate resilience, uh, youth inclusion, gender. Uh, so, what are these areas where we can uh, research together? Um, and and these are some of the things that have come up. And then we'll go to the next one. And the how of doing this is by developing a shared vision, uh, finding great facilitators. And when and I think when this term was being used, it was really talking about um, who are your local um, partners? Who are the stakeholders that can help you get this done? Um, and and uh, and it's and it's and 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 really that's what that was uh, talking about. How how do you partner with uh, whether it's research institutions or um, or universities in order to to get this research done? Um, and 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 also making sure that you invite contribution from all actors and, and stakeholders uh, across board. The modalities of these, um, there were examples that were given. I think it was Venture 37, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, did quite a bit uh, during the um, uh, during COVID. There was some research that they led and that uh, ended up being um, uh, quite collaborative with different members of, uh, of this group uh, being part and parcel of those results, uh, making sure that the that you know that you're working with the uh, organizations that have a similar vision that there is mutual contribution and that there are clear roles responsibilities and um uh, for all of them and, and clear expertise that's coming to the table and then of course internally sharing with the relevant uh, local partners and then when it comes to the USAID partnerships that you see more and more of that collaboration happening um, even when it comes to research. And then the next one. So you see, we've given you guys, a, we've given all of you a little bit of a start when it comes to the how. So what we want in the small groups is to build on this. And then we go to the next one. And then the tools we've got, uh, there, there are very many different tools that were uh, given as examples. And sometimes they could be as basic as, as QuickBooks. Um, or even Excel. Uh, some of these are existing, like um, you know, common training guides that are there. There's Clarity 3.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, 7.0, 8.0, 9.0, 10.0, 11.0, 12.0, 13.0, 14.0, 15.0, 16.0,
although I think 2.0 is still in use, um, the harmonization of the tools that are there, because all these different CDOs have great tools, but is there a repository? Is there a way in which these tools can be shared or does everybody sort of remain in their proprietary fiefdom? I don't know. Um, so, and, and can we come up with some uh, automation of, uh, of assessment tools so that you can broaden the, the scope and you can broaden the impact? And then now when it comes to tools, there's also the how. As we said, we've started you off on this. Um, and here are, are some suggestions, um, including additional collaboration with uh, organizations that are within the space, but not necessarily uh, part of the, of, of, the, of the CDP, for example, ICA. Um, and then, uh, you know, the very practical bit around uh, making sure that it gets funded. It's well and good to talk about it, but even opportunities like these, you need to, um, and, and collaboration such as this one we're having right now, um, you, uh, uh, CDOs have to be deliberate about uh, putting the, the money aside to cover the time, to cover the, the resources that are, are required for such collaboration to continue. Um, and then uh, we go to the next one. Uh, and as that, that is coming up, there was a whole discussion around sub-awards and, um, and de-risking those by providing uh, additional information, but also hoping that the US, that uh, USAID and whatever guidelines they come up with will take into consideration some of these uh, requirements um, that, uh, that can be quite onerous. And, and you know, how do those apply when it comes to this idea of, uh, of locally-led development and and uh, and making sure that the work is done, but you don't necessarily take up all the time on on reporting. Um, but I digress slightly. And then there's of course learning, and we have all these different areas in which uh, the the what has been um, you know elaborated a little bit. Whether it's common training guides, gamified training, online learning, um, uh, use of technology, use of social media, uh, knowledge management, um, uh, strategies for a community of practice. And then how are we doing all of this? And it's uh, again, uh, budgets, uh, having individual organizations host, step up to lead uh, research on best practice, but not, uh, but also not just research, but also implementation of best practices. And, but making sure that these are done within uh, the proper cultural contexts and, and you know, keeping those in mind as well. Um, uh, having the annual learning event like we're doing right now, um, so these are some of the areas and, and some of the suggestions that have been put forward. So I know I've spoken a lot, um, uh, but I would like to put you all into uh, three groups. We had had a, a chat uh, on, on this, uh, an email sort of back and forth on the side with, uh, with Britt and, and with Ashley. Um, I, I'm, I don't see Jennifer here, but that's okay. Um, and, uh, and and Barbara, we're going to have you in uh, in in three different groups. And what we would like you to do in these three groups is to focus on the on the how of these three things: the the learning, the uh, the tools, and the research. Although Barbara always says it should be the other, the order should be the other way around. <laughs> but yes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on the how in these three areas. What I would like you all to do, and if you could take this note, is number one, when you're in your groups, you'll have uh, group leads that will be guiding the discussion, but you need to select somebody who's going to take notes, because I will ask you to please email those notes to me. I'll put uh, mine and Selandi's uh, email addresses in the chat. If you could please email those notes to me, because I use them for the report that you will all get, right? Um, if you haven't typed it out, you can take a picture, just send me the picture, try to write legibly if you're not going to type it out. Um, and then the third thing is, please select somebody to um, come back and, and report to all of us in plenary, because that's what we're going to do. Um, in uh, Selandi, sorry, I'm going to ask you to go back to the, um, to the three, um, those three slides. And what I would suggest you do is that you take a screenshot, mainly because we, um, we're, we're using this, uh, we're, we're, we're a little slightly analog, we're slightly 101 on, on this one, but that's okay too. 
um, so that you can have some of this information in front of you on uh, on uh, on on the what, sure. uh, or or rather on the what and the how. So if you could just go through that, please take a screenshot uh, because you don't know what group you're going to be in. So take a screenshot of all of these. <laughs> we'll drop it on the chat as an attachment and you can always pick that up. But um, uh, it's sometimes easier when you just have it as a screenshot. So, uh, Celandi, do you want to go back a little bit slowly and people can do that? Sure. I'm Thank you. So More. this is the how for learning. This is what has started off. I'm hoping that this will trigger your um, your discussion. And then we go to the next how for tools. And then the last how for research. So the reason we're saying, please take a screenshot is because this part of the thinking has already been done. And what we want from you is uh, new information, additional information, some new ideas about how we can do this. So we're going to put you into the breakout rooms. Please remember, select your note taker, select who's going to give the feedback in uh, plenary and also, um, uh, and, uh, and and yeah, let's, let's have that. Um, and make sure that you email us the notes when we're done. Now, before we go into all of that, um, I'm going to just ask randomly over here. Um, let's see our chat participants. Um, if a, Megan could tell us who her favorite musical artist is before we go. Oh, just a second. I'm trying to put my video on here. Hi, Megan. There we go. Hi. Um, yeah, I put in Andre Bocelli. He's uh, he's one of many favorites, but um, that was what first came to mind. So <laughs> fantastic. Yes, thank you for asking. Yes. So enjoy the breakout sessions. Uh, we're going to have you in there for um, for 20 minutes. Um, Bailey, thank you so much for joining us for the time that you have. We will be sending you out this um, report for today. And, and I do hope that you find that useful. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, let's, let's hear from everybody. Here's your, your chance to get, give your input and to collaborate, which you all said you want to do. And as Judith pointed out, we can be, we can learn something new that we are part and parcel of, um, of the, the new way of, um, the, of, of creating something new as, as we collaborate together. So let's do that. We have 20 minutes to do so. And Salandi is going to put us all into the different groups. Um, so we have one led by Barbara. We have one led by Ashley. We have one led by Britt. Um, and hold on, I think Justin has a question for me. Yes, yes, that's a good point. Because you're gonna be in smaller groups, if you can use your camera, please switch on your camera so that you can, you know, see each other kind of network virtually type of thing. Um, and, uh, and yes, let's do that. And you have 20 minutes and you'll be pushed back into the, into the plenary. So yes, so Britt, we have 20 minutes for, for the session. We'll start the clock when everybody is, uh, is put into the breakout rooms. Yeah. Um, and if you need any help, there's usually a button in the, in the session. So you can always ask us and Justin or Selandi or myself will we'll jump in and, and try and sort you out. Okay, so let's do this. Let's hear what you all have to say about the, about the how when it comes to these three pillars. Enjoy your discussions, everyone. I hope that you've had some good discussions. Uh, we were eavesdropping a little bit on Barbara. So I know that they've been some very exciting ones. Uh, we can't wait to hear from all of you. And um, I, are you all ready? Have you selected the person who's gonna do the feedback, the person who's emailing us the notes? Oh, I need to put that on the chat. I'll put the email addresses on the chat just now. Um, and I 
I hope that you managed to uh, get to know each other a little bit. Uh, you put your videos on and you can put faces to names. And um, we're going to start with, well, before we start, I do actually have something. Um, I'm going to ask somebody else for their uh, their their favorite artist. But before we, and I, you know who I want to hear from? I want to hear from Valentine. Valentine, who's your favorite musical artist? Please tell us. My my favorite is right. Kiss Daniel. Aha, uh -huh. and then uh, tell us a little bit more. About him? Yes. Because yeah. we, is, he, is, he, is he Rwandan? Is he, you know, where is he from? Yeah, he's a Nigerian. A Nigerian, uh, you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like his music because the, the beat and how the the meaning of what, what he, he sing. Yeah. 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 And okay. the dance is good. It's enjoyable. Thank you. And Valentine, which organization are you with? I'm with uh, Ventura 37. Aha. Okay. So you're with uh, with Willie. Willie was here last week. Yes. With Willie and uh -huh. Carrie. And Carrie, of course. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Um, I do have another thing for you guys. We have... a. Uh, trivia it's world cup and i have been really enjoying watching the world cup i i don't know how many of you guys are football fans but the morocco is in the semi-finals and i'm excited yeah. so we of course have to match it up with cooperatives that's why we're here so of the four countries that have made it to the semi-finals in the world cup right and for those of you who didn't know it's argentina Croatia, France, and Morocco have made it to the semifinals. And um, of all of those, which one has the most number of cooperatives? All right. So we're on the same mentee. Remember, you can click on it on the right-hand side of your screen. Click on the blue box that says open and give us your vote. So I can see somebody, four of you have responded. Um, I'm waiting for the rest of you. Aha. Uh -huh. Five, six of you, eight of you. Let us know, let us know, let us know what you think about which country has the most number of cooperatives. Okay. All right, then 12 of you. If we can get to about maybe 13, 14, then we can go to the next one. Remember, you can just click on Menti on the right hand side of your screen on the blue box and you can go ahead. Uh, the code is uh, the triple one three two seven six eight, or you can use your phone, whichever you find easier. So let us know what you think. Uh, one more, and then we go to the next one. Well, actually, yeah. Oh, ooh, we've got now a tie. Oh my goodness! All right, maybe we need one more then, <laughs> so that we can have this tie break. Anyway, uh, it doesn't have to be even, so it's fine. Um, Selandi, shall we go to the next question? And there's the answer. So guess what? The one that everybody thought didn't have the most number of co-ops <laughs> has the most number of cooperatives. It's Morocco. Um, however, uh, just back to the other one, uh, the one that has the most number of members, cooperative members, is actually France. But number of cooperatives is Morocco. All right. So again, we're on these four countries. Which is the largest type of cooperative in France? Is it agriculture and forestry? Is it consumer and retail? Is it credit union and, and, and banking? Or is it insurance? Which one do you think is the largest type? of cooperative in France. Okay, so let us know, let us know, let us know. Uh-huh, nine of you have said something. Uh -huh. 10 of you, 11 of you, keep going. Um, if we could just get to the same number who had responded before, then we can move to the next question. Okay, then. Aha, uh -huh. now for the last question in co-ops, right? I think, Solanda, we had three, but here's your answer. Ah, 
it's credit union and banking. And in fact, one of the um one of the biggest cooperatives in the world is actually French and it's a it's a credit union slash bank, right? Um, so there's a bit of trivia for you. And uh and as we as the last one comes up, um here, uh, here's another one. True or false, there are over 10 million more cooperative members in Argentina than there are in France. Let us know which one, is that a true statement or is it a false statement? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Two more, two more, two more. Let's get to the 13 participants again and then we can uh, we can get the answers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. So we're at 15 of you, and 80% of you think that this is a false statement. So, Landy, do you want to give them the answer? That is correct. And I will say all props to ICA, which is where I got all this uh, data from, with the exception of Croatia. Croatia's uh, data is not included in their global maps, but I would urge you to take a look at them. It's actually quite impressive. You know, you just click on the region. It shows you the number of cooperatives. It shows you the number of cooperators in that particular um, country and even the number of employees that are there under cooperatives. So again, that's around collaboration. It's around research. It's about data. It's the meaning behind that data, and we're seeing this happening um, around us. So just so you know, Argentina, of the four countries, um, France is the one that has the most number of members at 28.7 million. Uh, then Argentina has 17.8 million. Uh, Croatia, Morocco has 563 uh uh, 563,000 members, almost 564,000 members. Um, and then for Croatia, I didn't have the number of members. I just had the number of co-ops. And that one was 1,179 co-ops in Croatia. And um, Morocco has 27,262 co-ops. But France has the most members in the million. So exciting trivia, Paul. You see, I'm picking up on the stuff now. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and hear back from, um, from the different groups. And we will start with, um, with research because this is the learning group after all. So uh, research, who is going to be presenting from research? Hi, everybody. I'm going to, to represent my, my research group. <laughs> Okay, um, well, we discussed uh, different things. Uh, the first thing we discussed is that it's very important to, to make a research, uh, start uh, uh, understanding what is the real need of a cooperative. It means um, taking in consideration the field needs. So it's very important to have a real understanding of what cooperative needs. And after that, it's important to make a list of priorities because needs are a lot in each cooperative. Also, it's very important to, to, to consider capacities of local partners, how can they develop this, this type of, of research and to carry out a good methodology. Megan uh, explained a, a lot of, about methodology because it's very important to, to um, take in consideration different things, social part, cultural part of each cooperative to, to include and to make members be part of the research. It doesn't mean that just only the technical team or, or decision making can be part of a research. We need to include members to, to have a better approach of research. Another thing that we discuss is um, that each research must have flexibility because uh, in the path, everything can change very, very uh, easy. And it depends a lot in our countries or political problems that we can have that can change the, the, the general background of our research. 
Um, another thing that we discuss is that there's no one, uh, there's not only one receipt to develop research. So we must consider that each cooperative is like a person and it has its own personality, its own needs. So it's, it's very important to understand uh, uh, this part. Uh, consider expectation, consider stakeholders and political stakeholders to make research sustainable. Um, another thing is uh, in each country, uh, the cooperative model is different. Uh, according to legal framework framework two. So some priorities that we discuss, discuss at the end is um, uh, create or, or develop research uh, related to governance, to social behavior, to healthy communication, because uh, if we don't have a good governance, we cannot research in productivity, quality, and everything is related to take good decisions. Another issue that, that it's very important to consider in, in, in new research is a climate change, a legal and regulatory framework, um, and, and the balance between incl inclusion and business model. So that was our discussion. And I don't know if maybe someone of my group maybe can support another idea that I forgot. Um, any add-ons from uh, from Paula's group? Good. You're good. All right, then. Um, okay. Well, thank you. I hope your note taker is going to give me notes. I'm seeing Barbara here writing furiously, so I don't know whether she was the note taker, but at least I know where to get some. <laughs> the, whoever it was who was designated, please do email. Let me, uh, Selandi, please put our email addresses in the chat so that we could do that. Um, and, and thank you. One of the things you said, um, eh, I like that, that each cooperative has its own personality and that we should keep that in mind even as, as, we, um, as, we, as we collaborate in, in, in research. Okay, and then now uh, we have the next group um, coming up. And we're going to look at uh, tools. So uh, who is going to speak about tools? Uh, our group um, included Rit Cruz, she was our master facilitator, Rebecca Skip, um, Trey Richardson from ACD Avoca, and Alan, um, who is a local partner with NCBA Clusa based out of Tanzania. And um, well, my notes are are sparse, but that's just because we had so much good talk. <laughs> um, I looked at the tools that were created at the in-person and we spent some good time kind of clarifying what they were and what the list was, just making sure everyone was on the same page of what, what the whole list was. And then started um, talking a little bit more about other tools that we would add. Um, when we got to talking about, um, you know, how best to use them and store them, um, we talked about aggregating them. I think the consensus was the OCDC um, website would be a great place to aggregate and store tools, have everyone who has one um, share them there on that on that site. Um, and we got into a little bit of a conversation on different cooperative capacity um, tools that we know of. Um, health partners are sharing one. Um, OCDC, our governance um, tool we developed a few years ago. Um, some some members have used Scope Insight. I know um, Land Lakes Venture 37 has another um, capacity tool. So kind of take an inventory of what, what all is out there. Um, and, and knowing that not one tool may work we we support a lot of different cooperatives whether it's credit unions or energy cooperatives or worker owned cooperatives or housing cooperatives so so tools may um be used by certain sectors but not all um let me go back to my notes i think um and then we also we were talking about tool development i think there's general consensus amongst the group that um including that activity in a proposal was the way to go but we could have kept talking. <laughs> we were just starting to scratch the surface. It was a great, great group. 
That's good. It's always nice when there's uh, a lot to say and there's not enough time, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than uh, rather than, than than crickets. I like what you said about you know just thinking through the inventory of of tools that are already in existence so that we could build more efficiencies into what's going on rather than um, than duplicating or. Um, or, or, or again, just spending so much money on um, on recreating something that's already there, and I do think that that was one of the things that came out of the the physical of the in person event was this um, was this discussion around best practices and sharing of best practices and sharing of what has been working um, again, just so that we could build in efficiencies into into what we're doing. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, as, and as we do that, you create a, a true, a true community of practice. And and thank you for that, Luan. I'm happy to hear that the OCDC governance tool came up again. Uh, one of the authors of it is on this call, Catherine Ford. And so that's uh, that's very exciting. So we're going to hear from uh, our our third group, who is going to go ahead and uh, and present on that. Have you uh, selected? Yes, <laughs> me. Okay. I'm to, to represent the chat group. Um, we were talking with uh, Ashley, Catherine, mm -hmm. and Paul um, yes. about how to, um, or learning how. And we thought that it's important to um, have more, um, more research about inclusion and youth and learning uh, another about another countries and, and uh, what they are doing in other cops about to include uh, more women in in cops and youth and how we can learn about other methodologies about how to get close to these groups and share about and probably share what we are doing in in equal exchange also uh, we we talk about uh, the importance uh, of strategies and methodologies in virtual learning and how we can uh, share this with our groups in in COPS and the importance of use for communicate and have a more um, close or stay more close with the with the members. And we talk about the importance of um, budget uh, community, sorry, about the community of practice in collaborative groups and how they can lead some topics um, in, um, in the next research or in the next virtual learning. Uh, we talk about the annual event, uh, le annual learning event that could be something hybrid and probably could be some um, physical and other people can participate in virtual way. And I don't know if something I missed, Ashley, or I forgot. <laughs> Daniela, I think you really um, got it all. The only one I think I would add, we talked a little bit about the learning sessions that Barbara has been leading and you know, thinking about um, and it came up last week as well, but if there is an opportunity sort of to combine that group with the collaborative group and for, instead of two groups, have one larger community of practice. And I know Danielle is very active in, in Barbara's group as well. Thanks, Wengachi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for that. Um, I, I think this uh, this piece around communication keeps uh, com keeps coming up, which I think um, just underscores how important that is. Um, you know whether the the communication is happening or uh, uh, it came up in the research group, the, the one that talked about uh, making sure there is robust and healthy communication, especially from the governance level. Um, because that's what would help when it comes to uh, to comes to research. It came up again when we talked just now about uh, about tools, and then we've seen it coming up here about communication being part and parcel of learning. So I think that um, 
this we a little bit more you know can be unpacked around what that could look like and and how that would be um affected when you're you're looking at um at next steps and especially when we keep this in mind when um when this particular community is is thinking of 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 the new APS the uh question around inclusivity around um locally led development around climate and how can we take these three pillars, whether it's uh, the research, the tools, the learning, how can these be applied um, as you're all thinking um, of uh, the next few months, really? Um, we're hoping that the, there'll be more information that will be that will be out uh, about it sooner rather than later. So um, thank you. Thank you to all of you for uh, for sharing, for um, for letting for representing your groups as well as you have. And um, and I think you know what we're going to do now is is move to um, to the next bit. And if um, uh, Salandi would just put the uh, slides up for me again for um, our next bit in the agenda, um, I think we're we're doing quite nicely on time. <laughs> we'll try and and, uh, and 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 keep it that way um, because we have uh, we have managed to. Uh, to come back and 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 really look at uh, at those opportunities for joint action and and just really hear from you and and get your feedback on on what we've been able to uh, build uh, given what was already shared in the in person event. Um, so 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 thank you for that. One of the uh, before we forget before we get into the synthesis and the and the group photo and all of that. Um, you know, I'm really enjoying this business of uh, randomly asking people about their favorite music. So uh, please allow me to continue to do that. Trey Richardson, please tell us about your favorite musical artist. Yeah, um, I kind of had a difficult time with this one. I. Uh, uh -huh. Do you want to put your, can you put your camera on? Is it yes. possible? Sorry. Um, I have, I, I don't know if I have one singular favorite artist, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it's a trick question. <laughs> so when I did my Spotify rap this year, uh, Metallica uh -huh. was up at the top. I think I've just been wow. to a lot of Metallica when I work out and that's why it was up there. Okay. Well, thank you. So thank you. for, um, for those of you who haven't added thought of Metallica, there's, there's something else to think of for your uh for your playlist and uh Carmen uh Carmen Rosa would you like to share a little bit about your music or um your favorite music Carmen I hope you're still on well maybe she stepped away from her computer um so we'll ask, uh, Barbara wants me to ask Alan. So I'll ask Alan. <laughs> Alan from Tanzania. Tell us, who is your favorite okay. artist? Well, my favorite artist is Kofi Olomide from, from Zaire. Uh-huh. Well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, he did a very nice collaboration with a Tanzanian artist not too yes. long ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. But you didn't put your camera on. Is it possible? Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And uh, now that cameras are on, um, Selandi, would you be able to take the group picture? If you all could just put your cameras on for just a little bit, um, then we can take our group picture. And um, yes. Thank you, Daniela. Um, I'm trying to see here. Uh, well, we've concluded that Carmen may have walked away from her computer. Um, I think Paul has also walked away from his computer. But uh, for those who are here, please go ahead. Um, and I guess we do gallery view, or is that just me? Let me just, put it yes, in. Yeah, gallery view for myself. <laughs> and I'm going to ask uh, Justin if he doesn't mind taking the photo. And so, Justin, if you could give us a little countdown, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Do it. <laughs> Three, two, one. 
Take a look. We're good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, I thank you for 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 sharing. Um, I will, if you'll just allow me to um, to put uh, somebody else who was in the uh, in person event on the spot just a little bit. Um, I would appreciate it. It would. I would really want. It's just a little bit of your feedback um, uh, for. I, I, especially because you've you were in both, um, uh, Ashley. If you would uh, please give us some of your 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 thoughts, it would be the whole Kenyan thing of mine is not a question but a comment. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, I think I I shared in my small group. It's been it was really nice. I think everyone was very appreciative to be able to be back together. We had a lot of both large group and small group discussions about what comes next for all of us and areas that we'd like to be focused on in the coming year. I think today's conversation was really great um, you know, to hear from Daniela and others in my small group about how we can continue to make our um, OCDC CDO groups uh, more global, more inclusive, um, including more voices from our international teams and uh, working together to, you know, have collaborative activities both within the ICRG space, um, but also working more closely with one another and finding those areas of synergies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Ashley. And it was also really good to see the, um, uh, the working lunches that were taking place, um, and uh, and 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 the the more informal discussions that were also happening, and we do hope that this is something that is going to uh, also continue offline, um, eh, as uh, and and that uh, different uh, CDO members are um, are continuing to explore ways of um, of of working together, especially when you find yourselves in. Um, in, in the same uh, countries in implementing uh, different programs. So that's um, that's really good. Um, I see that there we do have, um, well, I, we have a, a couple of other people, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm not going to uh, ask for a share right now, unless uh, somebody would like to, if they would like to raise their hand and do that, um, I'm happy to uh, to hear from them. But what we what you know, looking at um, what we've discussed, and also just taking into consideration some of the uh, some of the areas that we uh, that we talked about, I am pleased that we are looking at um, at a very sort of practical next steps when it comes to um, what is going to be what can be done and and what can be uh, almost operationalized when we start to think in these three areas, because we've gone into a little bit more of the, of, of the how this can be done. Um, there is also a recognition that there, some of these steps are, um, are already taking place. And, um, and, and I know that again, communication keeps coming up as something that is quite important um, and that there is feedback that is considered and that feedback is what goes into uh, the creation of uh, platforms such as this and and and, um, and and learning events, right? Because one of the reasons why we had two is so that we can get as many voices um, uh, around the room as, as possible, whether that is happening uh, virtually like we're doing right now, or whether that happened in person as we had last week because really and truly it is important to um to to be as inclusive as 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 we possibly can um it does strike me though um and this is me coming in as a as a as a non cdo member so let's you know please uh receive this as that um that you know we do we have talked a lot about inclusivity and we have talked about um the inclusion of uh, of women We've also talked about the inclusion of youth, 
But um, I think that one of the challenges that I'm throwing out to all of you, as you consider this and as you um, as you uh, collect this uh, disaggregated data, is that you also take into consideration persons with disability. And the reason I'm saying that is because this ends up uh, these uh, persons, especially with physical disability, end up being uh, even more marginalized than those two groups that we have talked about. And so I think that um, those are some of the statistics that are not always taken into consideration. Um, and uh, and there, there is an effect within all of that because it does directly affect, especially if you were to uh, look at unpaid care and, uh, and, and the role of women, if there is, a, let's say, a child or even an adult in a home that has a, um, a, a physical disability, that will directly impact the amount of unpaid work that typically the woman will have to do within that particular household. So it is one of those um, areas where I know it hasn't, ne hasn't necessarily been the focus, but it is um, a challenge to all of you as you're uh, creating your programs that you do not leave out. Um, let's let's follow the leave no one behind and uh, and also look at uh, whether there's a possibility of uh, of, uh, of 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 counting those who are are so often left out of um, of of this data and and of this research because you know your role in in this space um, you do know that what doesn't get uh, measured or doesn't get counted doesn't get done so um, so yes yeah, so so that's my my uh, my my challenge to you all um we're actually going to finish on time today and i'm so excited about that i don't know who else is because we that was we we're listening to feedback we're we're taking that into account we are we we are keeping an eye on the clock this time around and um and and uh, and, and i'm really pleased about that so i'm going to hand it over to um to judith who's going to tell us a little bit about what sort of the, let's think about it as as next steps are after this um and um and yes over to you Judith. Th th thank you very much Mangeshi and of course thank you to everybody for uh for coming first but also for your participation in the small groups it's really great to hear uh what you've created together your, what you've shared and that's really important and um, immediate next step is all of that gets uh, stirred into the mix, and we will be sending, as Mangeshi said earlier, um, uh, a synthesis report of the events, um, meaning the in-person as well as this. We consider them to be one event, um, and uh, we will send that to you. And then, at least from the, the, the research group point of view, we hope to uh, engage with each of you um, uh, individually to discuss more deeply your own priorities and your own um, aspirations going forward. I will uh, comment also on this idea of research, which is great that everyone here, uh, I take from the, the comments on that, really believes in the importance of evidence and um, decision making based on evidence that it that comes from research and having said that uh it's also important to differentiate different types of research there's one sort of big policy facing what difference do cooperatives make that <clears throat> for example i hope most of you are familiar with that 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 OCDC and research group carried out uh, a couple of years ago and that provided sort of policy facing evidence about the impact of cooperatives on people's individual members lives which at the end of the day is what it's all about. Um, on the other hand, there's also research that focuses on specific um, implementation, and a lot of you talked about that, understanding the differences of cooperatives and the context. Context is very important to both uh, policy facing and more practice or implementation facing. So I really commend you all for you know, supporting that and, and understanding 
that this is both uh, important for impact and also a differentiator, I think, for our overall cooperative development community. There are many practitioners in international development. Some of them may be very open to uh, really learning and uh, advancing based on the evidence to try to do the work better. Others, maybe less so, and that we have chosen together to take a systematic approach, I think is really great. So I do want you all to think about the research group as a resource for all of you in different ways, including in research. We can partner with you as a research partner. We can support your um, design and your plan so that the, the outcomes aren't uh, are, are very uh, rigorous, uh, rigorously based. Um, but also that um, recognizing that each organization, we talk about each cooperative having its own personality and interests, so do each of you CDOs. And some of you really are very interested in, in undertaking more comprehensive research. And I think that's great. And we are happy to support that or not as uh, people might, might wish. But others of you may not want to do that. And I'm saying I'm speaking particularly to those of you who, who do not particularly want to become um, heavy duty, shall we say, research organizations, which is perfectly fine. And that's one of the roles that we also can play to support that. So this is a big tent in that sense. We're very different organizations working in very different sectors, very different sizes and very different business models even. And so I think that we, but we're united by the cooperative development. And so I just wanted to say that to all of you um, and uh, we're happy to talk to any of you at any time uh, individually about that. And we will also be, be, be reaching, reaching out. And then one, getting back to what Paul was saying about uh, OCDC being a go-to place about international uh, cooperative development. We're making a concerted effort in that regard. We are working on a new and updated website. I do hope some of you, all of you actually, uh, do consult our website. And we do have currently uh, a resource hub and tools and electronic learning that is already there that will be there, that can assist you as uh, in, in the work that, that you do. So um, just a brief commercial on that, that we do have some, some tools and modalities that are available to you. So I guess in closing, just again, say thank you for your contributions to making this a very, very rich session today. And I really, uh, really, really appreciate your, um, your participation and, to end that this is not the end, it's the end of this session perhaps, but not the end of the conversation. It will be continuing. And as we work together, as we talk together, we also strengthen our overall community, which is one of the other things that we really want to do to support and deepen the roots of those of us who are working in cooperative development to strengthen the impact that each of us can have in making a difference for the lives of the people whom we are trying to serve. So thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that, Judith. Um, you know, um, Wagari Mavai, um, who, is, who was Kenyan and also Africa's first uh, Nobel Peace, uh, first female Nobel Peace Laureate recipient, uh, uh, was known as the as a, as a political activist, an environmental activist, and, um, and, and she really was around that uh, intersection of uh, the environment um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and people and, uh, and governance. But I bring her up because one of the things that she's famous for saying is that you have to keep at it until it becomes rooted. And that can be said for trees, that can be said for research, that can be said for any change that you want to bring about. And so we must all keep at it until it becomes rooted. We must keep at what, uh, what the vision is for, uh, for cooperative development and the change that it can bring. We must keep at it in, uh, in uh, new ways of working so that when something has, is, is nascent and, it's, uh, and you're starting it out, 
we must continue to water it and nurture it until it can stand on its own. So even as the uh, discussion, especially around locally led development continues, um, and, uh, and, 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 and it's, there's a lot of debate about what that looks like, even if USAID does have their own definition of it, and that is what, especially as, um, as a CDP recipients, uh, all these organizations would be following. Um, it is something that, that does require some change in how things are done. But in order for that to succeed, uh, we must all keep at it. And the same thing goes with uh, all this research effort that is being done. We must keep at it until it, uh, until it becomes rooted. I see Paul is back with us, fantastic. Um, and uh, we were going to do Menti first, but I think it would be, I think it would be better if we hear from you, Paul, before we go into uh, Menti, because you know we we love this instant sort of feedback stuff with Menti, but um, also because we are collecting data and we do want to hear from you. So, but first, let's hear from you, Paul. Well, thank you very much, Mangesi, and I'm going to um, build on your theme there of, of being uh, rooted. Uh, cooperative development is like planting a seed. It goes down first before it goes up. And that's very important for us to remember that we, we have to have the foundation or the roots of a, of, of a strong uh, tree in order to promote cooperatives. And the fifth cooperative principle is education, training, and information. And that's a very powerful principle. It's what sets cooperatives apart from other types of businesses, our focus on education, training, and information. And so I really appreciate everyone's participation uh, in, in this virtual learning event and in the in-person learning event, because I think it's critical to the success of our programs and for the success of cooperative development in general. Again, building on you know, the theme that Judith and I are, are ringing out here is that uh, we, we are building OCDC and the research group to be the go-to place for uh, international cooperative development. And your participation is helping us to make that uh, dream become a reality. Thank you. I, I like what you said about, you know, it, first it goes, it has to go down first before it goes up. So we'll remember that, you know, especially when it, it's looking a bit difficult. Um, and uh, on the happy note of, uh, of, of emergence, we're going to go ahead and, um, and get the mentee, hear your feedback about this session. Um, and thank you, Salandi, for putting that up. We've got... Uh, my favorite question from Justin about what did you learn from today's session? Um, please click on the blue button on the right-hand side or use your code on your phone if that's what you've been doing and let us hear from you what you learned from today's session. You can tell us more than one thing. We're hoping that you know we get more than one answer from each of you. Um, uh, please go ahead and, and, and give us that feedback. Okay. Um, oh, it says waiting for presenter. Let's see. Uh, you need to vote, okay. And then uh, enter the code. Thank you. I see you've started to respond. Uh-huh. And let's hear from some more of you. There's three of you so far. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. There's three of you. If we could get to the kinds of responses we had before, that would be great. Um. And yes, you know, there's that there's that question of global participation, um, and we are really thankful because today we've had um, representatives from uh, Latin America, from North America, from Africa, specifically East Africa, and so that's good to hear and to see. Um, 
uh, I think the last time when we had the completely uh, virtual session, we did have um, we did have participants even from as far off as uh, as as the Philippines. So I think it's really a matter of um, of timing more than anything else, especially when it comes to that. Uh -huh. So we've got eight of you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Who is this? Who likes Menti as much as I do? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, ways to achieve balance between inclusion, business, commercial issues, considering context, that that part is really, really, truly important. Um, and uh, and that complex challenges aren't impossible as long as we have strong core shared values. And that, you know, a lot of the tools that we have, they, they already do exist. How do we identify them? How do we share them? How do we, um, especially that, how do we build upon what is already there? We're at nine. If we could just get to half of you, I would be really pleased. So if we could have like maybe one or two more people answer, then we can go to the next question. Don't worry, there aren't that many. Um, one more person. You're not going to get me to double digits. Just say yes. Click on it on the little blue box on the right hand side. Um, and then Salandi, shall we go to the next uh, question? Okay, so um, ranking, it's quite easy. Uh, how do you feel about the event when it comes to technology, content, modes of engagement, and your ability to give input? Please give us a ranking there from very dissatisfied to satisfied, and um, we will put it on a scale. Um, and then after this, don't worry, it's only one last question, and we will let you go uh, on with the rest of your day or or your often or your evening yeah we have one person um thank you two people uh-huh if we can get to double digits that would be great and you know and as this is coming up um one of the reasons we're really just trying to collect all of this data now is because even the fact that, despite the fact that all of you do a lot of data collection and research, you're all a bit notorious for not responding to surveys. <laughs> so let's hear from you when we have you. <laughs> so please, uh, please go ahead. Oh, thank you. We're at 12. And, uh, and now we are going to go ahead to, to the last one. What would you like to see? in our future learning events. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the virtual one, right? Because we are talking about, um, you know, where this goes. It could be what you'd like to see in any type of setting. Uh, you can talk about uh, the virtual learning event. You can talk about an in-person learning event. As long as we're here, we're collaborating, hearing um, from each other. Um, how would you like us to do that? What would you like to see? So, okay. And actually there has been quite a bit of work that's been done in uh, gender uh, from this particular group. So uh, again, I think it goes back to some of what has been said before. The fact that we do have a lot of this information. We do have these resources, we have this research. Um, and is there a way that they can be found in a in a common place, I like what uh, Luan's group had suggested that uh, perhaps uh, OCDC can uh, can be that repository of um, of uh, of of tools and um, and and also some of the existing research that's we there. actually already have some of that. So that's yeah. what I was mentioning. Now go to our learning resource center. Exactly. Yes. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so please um, let's uh, let's 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 look and see what um, what we've already done and build upon that, right? I think it's still part of uh, of getting rooted. Um, thank you, Paul, for being with us. Uh, thank you so much for um, for your 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 comments and your input. And uh, and yes, and 
happy holidays to you as well. Um, okay, more small group work opportunities and networking, absolutely. Time for uh, the breakout sessions, okay. Yeah, but we also had to be, there's always a fine balance, isn't there? Between um, packing it in and uh, and staying on time. But we do take that into consideration and we, we thank you for your feedback. Um, it would be great if one more person could get us to double digits, but if not, then, uh, then that's it. So I, I do thank you all for your time this morning or this evening. Um, for your participation, most of all, your um, your willingness to uh, to share, because this is definitely not something that any of us take for granted. Um, there are always so many competing things, especially at this time of year, right? When there are reports to be finalized and things like that, and boards to prepare for. So we do thank you for um, for the effort and for the for the for the collaboration as um, as as Judith talked about. So we wish you all happy holidays, um, safe holidays. Uh, I wish you all the best in the upcoming APS as you all apply for it, and um, and I do hope that you will do so together in um, in this in the spirit of what we've talked about to uh, over here over these last few few days and and today these last few hours so again thank you to all of you thank you so much and um be safe bye <laughs>